Church has a great new opportunity for you all. It's called Cultural Companions. This ministry allows you to mentor refugee young adults. If you're interested, make sure to follow. There's going to be a training on October 4th, so you'll get all your information right there. Also, next week, we have Braylon Armenta. She's a life leader manager. She'll be speaking, but tonight, we have the one and only David P. Sorensen. He'll be speaking. Other than that, let's worship. Welcome, everybody. How are we doing tonight? Awesome. Well, we're going to put our hands together, and we're going to praise our Lord. Sing what can wash away my sins. You know what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
team oh my goodness they are just incredible so my name is David Sorensen I'm the tech coordinator here for spiritual life yeah that's my team in the back these guys are all amazing they're such good friends and uh, yeah it's incredible well it's an incredible honor to be here with you tonight um, there's a lot of people that would just love to have this privilege um, to speak into your guys lives and and I'm, I'm very honored for that. And so, um, just, uh, yeah, tonight we're going to be talking about anxiety. And uh, I know it's a really, really fun topic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but before we do that, I want to introduce myself and uh, let you guys get to know me a little bit. So, again, my name's David. This is my family um, right there, my grandparents in the middle, um, and uh, brother, and yeah, my fam. And then the love of my life on the right there, that's Desiree. Isn't she sweet? I know, right? I know. I'm a lucky guy. I'm a lucky guy. Um, and then uh, these are my parents, uh, Paul and Carol. Some of you right, might recognize Paul. He is a professor here. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's pretty incredible. He's my hero. Um, I always tell people if I can be half the man he is, I'll be a great man. Um, he loves to do, like, Superman poses. And so, like, this is him. Um, and then he wanted me to show this photo, too. And so that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's enough of that one. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but so tonight I'm going to tell you two stories. Um, uh, I've cried twice in my life. Uh, one time uh, when I got road, ran over by one of my friends biking. And then the other is when I broke my foot running from a snake. And so... And by the end of tonight, I'm going to tell you both of those stories. And so um, when I was nine years old, I was little Davey, and, uh, <laughs> and I loved BMX. Like, just as a kid, loved BMX riding, loved BMX biking. And this is what I thought we looked like, um, but in actuality, this is probably what we looked like, uh, <laughs> like that. And so 
uh, me and my friend Robert, we're riding around our park, and um, I don't know if you guys, like, love biking like I do, but, like, I love to skid turn. So, like, when you're, like, kind of riding, you just, oh, cool, man, let's keep going. All right, yeah. Well, we were out in the park, and uh, we were riding around, and I went to do a skid turn, but, like, a big one, like, to where you're, like, breaking, like, to where it's almost like if this was you, boo, oh, yeah. So I went to go skid turn like that, but on gravel, it's moving rock. And so I went and skid turned, but I fell over onto my bike. And uh, my pedals dug into my knees. And then all of a sudden, I look over, and my friend Robert is, like, barreling at me. And I'm just sitting on the ground, laying down, going, no, Robert, no, no. And sure enough, boom, 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 he runs over me. (laughs) And I start crying. And then I look back, and again, I see somebody coming. Ah! And it's my dad. And, like, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh. And he just scoots by me, thankfully. But Robert got me, and it got me crying. And that was the first time I've cried in my life. Well, Paul, the apostle Paul, is sitting in a jail cell. And he is about to have his head chopped off. And how many of you would just be like, any noise, any sound? You'd be like, oh, my gosh, no. Ah! Oh, goodness. It just comes and you're just feeling that ugh, tension, that anxiety. Well, he's sitting in a jail cell waiting for his head to be chopped off, and he writes this. Let's read it together. Or I'll read it for you guys. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Wow. Let's pray real quick. Father, I thank you so much um, for this night, Lord. We set it apart for you. And Jesus, we just want to give it all to you. And so, Lord, as we uh, look at this text, may you uh, let your Holy Spirit illuminate these words in our hearts. As we deal with anxiety and fear and all these things, Jesus, we just pray that your words um, would give us peace, would give us direction in what to do. Amen. So Max Lucado says, says this, the presence of anxiety is unavoidable, but the prison of anxiety is optional. I want to read that again for you guys. The presence of anxiety is unavoidable, but the prison of anxiety is optional. How often is it that we look at anxiety and look at those fears and we hold on to them? We're imprisoned by them. They feel, it feels like this wall, these boxes just coming in and deeper and deeper on us. How often is it that we look at them and go, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's nowhere to go. My anxiety is just crippling. It's crippling me. Well, as we see in Philippians, once again, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And this is incredible. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. Paul is letting us in on a secret of dealing with anxiety. He's saying, God will bring you peace. He's wanting us to give over control to these things so that God is able to give us peace. Anxiety is so crippling. It can be feeling like it's always around us, especially as you guys are dealing with so much in school. I know how difficult it is. To feel with that. Now, maybe you're hearing this and you're seeing prayer, petition, request. Well, I'm praying. I'm praying. Like your Christian friends are telling you, well, maybe you should just pray about your anxiety. Maybe you, maybe you should just pray harder. Pray harder? Are you kidding me? <laughs> maybe it's not that prayer is the problem, but the approach is the issue. So let's look at this again and see what God, uh, Paul has for us. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Prayer, petition, request. Prayer, petition, request. Prayer is saying, I know you can help, God. Prayer is the approach. God, I know you can help. Petition is, I know I need help. But where we see the secret in Paul's writing and where we hit really the center of this is the request. 
something specific and definite. Specific and definite. I think that is the secret that Paul is letting us in on here. Prayer, petition, and requests. So when we get to that, until you get specific, it's going to be very hard to deal with anxiety. When I was um, about 13 years old, me and my uh, family, we were out camping. And I, uh, I love camping. It's so fun. But I hate snakes. So we were camping, and we find this huge rock. And me, my brother, and my sister, we, like, come up to this rock, and we're starting to climb it. And I take a step, and my brother, like, is like, David, look down. And, like, in between my legs is this snake. And I'm like, uh-oh. I grab my sister, I put her on my back, and we start booking it back to the campsite. And so we go back, and I grab my little hatchet. I think it's an axe, but it's, a, it's just, like, that big. My brother grabs a stick, and then we grab our dad, my dad, and we're like, hey, let's go get this snake. Come on. Let's go get it. And so we go running over back to the rock, and sure enough, the snake is coiled up underneath the rock. And I don't know about you, but that just gives me the heebie-jeebies already. Like, I, I'm like Indiana Jones. How many of you guys have seen Indiana Jones? He hates snakes. I hate snakes. So... Um, <laughs> we see this snake, and my dad, he, like, puts down his things, and he grabs a stick, and, like, we're he- heading up to it, and, like, I feel like I'm right beside him. I'm probably, like, behind him with my little hatchet, and so, like, and he goes up to poke it, and it's just, like, just sitting there, coiled like that, and then all of a sudden, he goes to poke it, and <laughs> I know, right? It just freaks out. And I start booking it, and I'm running, and I'm running. And then all of a sudden, my foot just, like, freaks out. I don't know what it is. And, like, I just fall to the ground. And I'm just crying. (laughs) And my dad runs up to me. He's like, David, what's going on? And I'm just like, (laughs) and he goes, use your words. Use your words. (laughs) Well, I fractured my foot. I don't know, I think I hit a rock or wrong or something, but I fractured my foot, and I was just bawling there. Just <laughs> but my dad does this, use your words, use your words. How often, I don't know how many of you have like babysat kids or have like friends that are kids, I mean, you know, <laughs> but I do, <laughs> but like how often do they come up crying to you and they're like, yeah. And you're like, use your words. Use your words. <laughs> I think that's what Paul's getting at here. Now, there's a story of Jesus that I think is so perfect for this. Um, the gospel writer Mark records this beautiful story of Jesus that I think is perfect. And so it goes like this. It's Mark 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd... We're leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting on the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and sh- told him to be quiet. Shut up. Bro. <laughs> but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Jesus asked, what do you want me to do? I bet it's all, all the disciples looking at him going, Jesus, he's blind. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but he's blind, Jesus. Like, <laughs> but Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. What do you want me to do for you? God wants to know exactly what you're anxious about. When Jesus asks you to be specific, it's not for his benefit. He knows you're blind. It's for yours. What exactly? What exactly is it that you're anxious about? I'm afraid of school. I'm I'm afraid of this test. 
I'm anxious about this test. Well, what are you really anxious about? I'm anxious that, man, if I fail this test, then I might fail this semester. That's something God can deal with. I'm afraid that if I fail this semester, (laughs) man, I'm going to be a failure to my parents. That's something God can deal with. I'm afraid I'm going to lose this friendship. No, what are you really anxious about? I'm afraid if I lose this friend that God's not able to bring me a new one. That's something God can deal with. I'm worried about my body image. No, dig deep. What are you really anxious about? Well, I'm worried that no one's going to find me beautiful and then I'm going to live my life alone. That's something that God can deal with. I'm worried that if I live alone, God's not able to do that. So therefore, I don't trust God. That's something God can deal with. A specific prayer is a serious prayer. And we need to get specific. So, if a friend says, hey, let's hang out sometime. How's how specific are they? Like, hey, let's hang out sometime, man. No, they're not that. They're not that serious. But if they're like, hey, bro, let's get together. Let's, <laughs> let's meet for coffee at 7. Now, that's a serious, that's a serious friend. That's a serious message. Now, so today, I want us to come to God with what we are anxious about. I want you guys to dig deep and think about that. We're going to take a moment and do that in a second. But now, there is a level of anxiety that is so severe that it is so, so important and so very appropriate to get medical help. God gave us doctors and medicine so that we are able to move beyond that level of anxiety and get to the stuff of life. And so if that's you, I want to encourage you. We have student care over in Building 26. Chase is over there for you. Now, Tonight, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be digging deep. I want you guys to dig deep. God wants you to be specific. He's asking you tonight, what do you want me to do for you? Let's pray real quick. Father, we thank you so much that you you listen and you hear us, Jesus. Father, tonight, you want to use those things. You want to use our anxiety to help us to trust you more, to come closer to you more, Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are good and you listen and you hear us. It's your name we pray, amen. Now, before we finish, I want us to take a moment and think of that that thing. I want us to go beyond just this moment. I want us to be specific. Jesus is asking you right now to be specific. So we're going to just take a moment, and I want you guys to, to think of that thing in your mind right now. Jesus is wanting you to trust him again. I'm going to ask you to hold the hand of someone next to you. Tonight, we're here for each other. And as as you're lifting someone up and praying for them, someone is lifting you up and praying for you as well. I'm going to pray over us one more time, but I want you to be praying for that person next to you. Father, I thank you that you've brought us here together tonight, Jesus. There's someone here tonight that is in need of trusting you again, of 
digging deep, finding that thing that is, is bringing them anxiety and bringing that before him. Jesus is here and he's asking you, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus, I want to see again. Rabbi, I want to see. So Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit is here, is present, We're going to stand and continue to sing.
every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. You're Jesus, the only one you could ever see. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Show me. 
still choose to love us each and every single day. God, I pray that every one of us would leave with a touch from you tonight, God, and that we would just go out and be your hands and feet. I pray and ask these things in your name. Amen. Thank you guys so much for worshiping with us. Please exit out the back, the west doors. Also, if you need prayer, please don't hesitate to get prayer from one of our prayer warriors in the lecture halls right across the way. And yeah, have a great week. Lopes up. <laughs>